everyone. It is good to see you all again. It is uh, afternoon. And again, I am so grateful for each and every person who is here today. Before we get started in our sermon, there was a couple of things uh, that I missed. If you guys can just give me a quick moment to acknowledge. First, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, to Sister Maya and Deacon Twyman. Uh, they heard me on the phone. Well, Scott was out of the house already, but they heard me on the phone. Maya heard me on the phone trying to arrange stuff. And um, as I'm well trained uh, by our founding pastor, I was preparing myself to be both worship leader and preacher. And Maya came to me with her notepad, not being asked, but said to me, I will worship lead. So I praise God um, at what he is doing in um, her life because I made her promise that you just wouldn't be by proxy having to do everything because you just happen to be the pastor's kid. And so I just pray for her heart that she stepped up and did that on her own. I want to take, thank Deacon Twyman uh, for audio. And I have to thank uh, Sister April. I uh, called her and she was doing visual checks and sound checks with us to get it up and running. And I just want to say thank God that as the um as the Bible says, that his church will not fail. So I just want to let you all know that we will be uh, in person next Sunday. I also had the pleasure, since I had extra time this morning, um, to talk to Travis, who's the supervisor of our building services. Uh, he kind of explained what happened with our heat last week and reassured me we will be up and running next week. So I also thank God um, for our brother, Travis um, as well, who is making sure we go. Um, and also just also, I talked to a lot of people this morning, the Tabers, pray for them. They are in Chicago celebrating his brother's 80th birthday, um, but they were also able to see Harold, who have, we have been praying for. So continue to keep Harold in your prayers. Um, his, his, his prayer is that he walks again as he's in rehab. And he is also... Um, praying he needs a financial blessing as the rehab, uh, as the cost in, is getting uh, there. So let's keep Harold as well, uh, Tabor in our prayer as well. And I'll just go ahead and open this up in prayer and then read the scripture. Oh, Father in heaven, we just want to thank you for this day. God, we want to thank you for waking us up. We want to thank you for keeping us throughout this week. And we want to thank you for one more opportunity to come into your house and worship. As you died and gave your life to build up the church, we understand that the church is not about a people and not about a place, but it's about a people coming together and worshiping you. So God, wherever we find ourselves today, whether we're in our homes, in somebody else's house, whether we're in a rehab, whether in a hospital, whether we're worshiping from a car, Lord, we know that you have a mighty word in here for your people, dear God. So Lord, I just ask that you just still my heart, dear God, Lord, that you just focus me, dear God, and use me in a mighty way as your people need to hear from you. God, I count it an absolute honor to stand here and proclaim your word, God. You know what I stand in need of in this moment. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. Amen. So I'll start out by reading our scripture today, which comes from Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. And I'm going to be reading starting at verse one. And I think... Um, for the purpose, it was read through um, chapter four. I'll just take us through chapter three um, in this initial read. Therefore, since you have been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame 
and sat down at the right hand uh, of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Church, it was Tuesday late morning and my ability to endure was tested that day. See, there was somewhere that I needed to be on Tuesday. I had given my word that I would be there. And if you recall, Monday night into Tuesday, we got our first big snow of the season. And so as I dressed to leave the house, giving no thought to the snow that was outside, I realized that in order for me to move forward with my plans, I had to shovel my way out. I realized that not only did I need to shovel my front steps and shovel my walkway, but my car, the very vehicle that was going to move me to where I needed to be, also needed to be shoveled. So I began the task of shoveling outside all alone. And as I was shoveling, I began to grow tired. My body wasn't used to doing that. My toes were freezing cold. I could not find my gloves, so my hands were red and getting cold from gripping the shovel. I tried to maintain a good posture, but my back was beginning to hurt just a little bit. And I thought for a moment as I looked at my hands, certainly nobody would hold it against me if I turn back now and just go back in the house and go to bed. But instead, as our opening song said, I continued to go on. No matter the snow that was in my way, I continued to go on. So I continued to shovel forward and clear out everything that was blocking my path. And my decision to endure the cold and the pain to move forward, not get stuck or go back in the bed I believe was to my benefit because I was able to get to where I needed to be and enjoy the joy that God had for me. And see, if we go through the book of Hebrews, this is a letter that is written to a people that's similar to me on that Tuesday but for a different reason, they find themselves weary and tired. See, they were living in favorable conditions for them to be able to move forward. They were living in these conditions and they were so harsh on them that they were considering giving up. The recipients of the letter of Hebrews are new believers who were experiencing persecution for their faith. And under the weight of the persecution and the challenges of this new life that they found themselves living in Christ, they were considering that it might be easier just to turn back. They were going to turn back to their old Jewish beliefs and rituals to escape the persecution. But the author of Hebrews, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, began to minister to them and in a way to begin to shift their focus, not on the persecution or the challenges that are before you today, but he began to shift their focus to their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Hebrews, he begins to demonstrate to them the supremacy and the sufficiency of Christ. Instead, he's saying to them that you got to hold on to the good news of Jesus Christ. And in him, 
you will have what you need. Why? Because Jesus is superior than anything that you're going to face down here. And if you think that something is coming upon you that's bigger than you can handle, know that when you walk with Jesus, that it is Jesus who is enough. Hebrews starts at uh, chapter one, verse one, and it says, long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, the days that we are living in, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir over all things. And through him also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. It then says that after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. And having become much more superior than the angels, as his name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So then when we get to our passage today and the uh, Hebrews continues to take us through how Jesus is superior to all things. But then you know the passage, he takes us through in chapter 11, which we call the Hall of Faith. And he takes us through from the Old Testament, from creation all the way through. And all that chapter continues to tell you is by faith, this one did this. And by faith, this one did that. And by faith, God was able to do these things and work through people. It talks about how the faith of the Old Testament saints their belief in God's word was able to have them do things that they didn't think they could do on their own. And I want you to understand as you go down Hebrews chapter 11, none of them were perfect. None of them were exempt from struggles, yet because of their faith and because of the planting of their feet in the word that they received from God, they were able to move through and deal with all the challenges that came their way. So then our reading today picks up with therefore. And I love when God's word says to us, therefore, because basically the writer said, so now you done seen all of that, therefore, we got something for you to do. Now that I've set the stage and laid the foundation for all you need to do, take this information and therefore. And so it starts out by saying, and therefore, since we, that includes us, not just the original audience, but us, since we have been surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, the witnesses are there. So if we considered ourselves in a court of law, the first thing that the prosecution wants to get together or the first thing that the defense wants to get together is a witness list because I'm going to prove my point and I'm going to convince you that this is how it is and this is how it happened. And so these Old Testament saints are saying, we are the witnesses by faith what you can do by God's word. And so it's saying that since you have been surrounded by the great crowd of witnesses, since you have all this testimony coming your way of how they have endured, and yet they continue in their goal towards Christ, then it's saying, now what you going to do now? What side are you going to land on right now? You going to endure and walk by faith, or you going to turn back? and go of the things of old. And so in this, it's showing us that our journey as believers, unfortunately, are not 30-second sprints. They are not a walk on easy street. We will face 
trials. We will experience setbacks in our health. We will experience emotional challenges. We will want to get complacent and think of moving backward. But I encourage you today, just as the song says, as with Jesus Christ and all that he's done with those by faith, I ask you to keep on going on. Don't turn back, but go on. And so the scripture gives some instructions in the therefore. And the first one, it says that we have to lay aside. And what that means is we got to move the things out of our path that hinders our ability to walk forward in Jesus Christ. So anything in our lives that might be a stumbling block, move it out of your way, lay it aside. Anything that blocks your access from getting to Jesus Christ, move it aside and move it out of your way right now. Because God has created access through his son, Jesus Christ. And there's nothing standing in our way that God has put any barriers in our way from moving towards him. And see, God desires for us to move forward. And I believe 2024, God desires to continue in our walk, advancing and walking by faith, advancing the Lord's kingdom. And so then it goes into the next where it says that then instead, let us run with endurance, the race that has been set before us. See, God has put a path and a race before each and every one of us. It is a race that requires us to endure because church, there is a finish line. See, your route, your route and your race may look different from mine. My race may have some hills where it looks like you're running flat. And then there may be some times where your race has some hills when I look like I'm just coasting downhill. But church, I want you to know that regardless of the path that God has laid before you, it all leads to the same place. And that is our reconciliation to him and all glory going to God. So as we are running our race, we will hear the cheers of those beside us who continue to encourage us and motivate us and root us on to keep going. But I want us to be very clear that those who are cheering us on may have ran their race before, but they can't run the race that God has for you. It is important that even in the chairs and even in the rooting on that we understand that it is still on us to press on because God has a race and a place that he's trying to take us and it's growing us and grooming us and moving us to being more like Christ but it's also to move us to a place where we can minister and, and disciple and love someone who needs us in that moment. Church, we got to keep moving on. See, as we are running, the scripture tells us that we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. So you can glance at the crowds and you can take note of who's there. But when it's time to lock in and focus and run with endurance, it is important that we fix our eyes on Jesus. For verse two says, looking to Christ as the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him, church, endured the cross, despising it's the shame, and now he is seated at the throne of God. 
See, when we are moving forward, running our race, it might feel like we are in our circumstances all alone. I felt that way when I was out shoveling. And when we tell ourselves that we are in it all alone, we find it easier to then go ahead and turn back and say, maybe this is an opportunity for me to give up now. But I want us to remember that we need to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and understand that because Christ endured, that we are able to endure as well. See, the cross wasn't easy. Growing, going to the cross wasn't a clear walk. It wasn't where Jesus could drag his cross on. Jesus suffered. Jesus was beaten. His body was bruised. Nails went through his hand. But he endured all of it because he had us in mind. The cross, a shameful death, yet he endured because he had us in mind. And where Christ is seated today, our hope is not seated in a grave, not seated, buried, but it says that as he rose, he is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So I ask you to look at Jesus. Jesus is the picture of our faith. He is the originator as our hope, our faith is built on him. And as we believe in him, we have to understand that he is the perfecter. It is he is the one that continues to work with us and develop us and to work and to work us through. And it is he is the one that will bring us through completion. Jesus is the demonstration of our faith in his obedience in the Father. So I ask you, those who are suffering today, or those who feel like they're having to endure circumstances that they don't like, I ask you today, where is your focus? And that brings me to the title of the sermon, which is, what image on endurance are you capturing? What image in your endurance are you capturing? See, because three says, consider him, referring to Jesus, who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Let me say that again. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself. And why did he endure it? So that you don't grow weary or faint-hearted. Since I was preparing this sermon, I'm a mother of a teenager. And no offense to our youth who is watching today. But if there's one thing a teenager knows how to capture so beautifully, it's a selfie. They know how to angle that camera just right, how to catch the right light, how to put on the right filter. And if you want to capture something real good, get into a selfie with a young person. And they get to capture that picture, which focus on how they look in this moment. They don't need nobody else to capture it for them. They can do this all by themselves. Well, I realized, church, that that selfie mentality, that image of ourselves that we want to capture, all filtered up, that a lot of that has bled into our relationship with Jesus Christ and the intimacy that he desires to have with us. Because what we try to do in times where we have to endure, what we try to do in times when we're not feeling like we're our best, 
what we try to do is instead of fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ, the one that endured for our sake so that we don't grow weary, we want to flip the camera around and turn it on us and have justification to determine why this is too much for us, why we can't stand on the promises of God, why we can't continue to move by faith because we're focusing on us instead of fixing our eyes on Jesus Christ. If you want to get the best picture on endurance, you got to fix it on Jesus Christ. See, it's important that we understand we're not going to see what endurance looks like by looking out at the world. We're going to see what endurance looks like by opening up the word and starting to read God's word and the good news of Jesus Christ. Because it is in the word that we will understand that our very savior suffered for us and endured a shameful criminal's death to redeem us from sin and suffering. It is in that that we learn that when we were in bondage to sin and strapped with the penalty and the judgment of death on our back, that it was in our Lord and Savior who locked eyes with death on the cross and was buried and rose on the third day so that he could break death's hold from over our lives. It is in God's word and not the world that we will see that we are victorious, that we will understand that there's nothing that we will face down here that will erase the glory that awaits us up there. Jesus is our example of why and how we persist through life's challenges. It is Jesus who endured the rejection. Jesus endured the beating and the suffering and the criminal's death on the cross to simply redeem us from sin so that we can be reconciled with the Father and we too can walk forward and run the race that's been set before us and endure all that comes our way. Not only do we have Jesus as our example, but through our unity with him, we have his spirit as our helper. And we are often tested by trials and setbacks and people that seem like they about setting us up. But yet, church, we have to remain steadfast. In our faith in Jesus Christ, we have to move forward knowing that he has faced every temptation, yet he did not sin. So he understands from the place which, which we cry out to him. Church, we don't look to the left, we don't look to the right, but instead in these moments, we must fix our eyes on Jesus Christ and move forward. I shared earlier that I had to endure the shoveling in order to move forward on Tuesday. I had to push that snow from my path and I had to lay it aside on the sidewalk. I had to clear a path to get out. But uh, moving forward allowed me to show up and show love. I was also able to show encouragement to a fellow believer who needed to know that there were those out there who still loved them and would show up on their behalf. It was to allow me to show up and be a blessing to someone who was enduring hardship 
imagine if I had turned back that day. And so in our lives this month, this year, coming out of last year, in our lives where we have to endure hardship, I would encourage us this morning to move off of selfie mode, take off the filter, turn outward the camera and zoom in on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Clean your screen and adjust your focus on Christ and remember all that he's done for you. Recall all that he's taken you through and understanding that through his crucifixion, his burial and his resurrection, that he bore suffering in his body and that Jesus completed his work and secured us an eternal victory. So where is our focus today? We endure so that we are able to imitate Christ. Others will be encouraged by watching us walk and run the race that's been set for us. Others will see us and be drawn to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. And others will be reminded that they don't have to look to the world to fill their needs, that they don't have to look to the world to take away their pain and their suffering, that all they need do is bring it to Jesus because he is enough. I woke up this morning and let me just say all that reference to selfie and Zoom and so forth, all of that was written before this service came about today. But I woke up with a song in my heart as I was preparing to preach on endurance. And it was the simple song, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though no one joins me, still I will follow because Jesus is all I need. Though no one joins me, Still, I will follow. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back. Church, I plead with you this afternoon. Jesus is enough for us to endure. Jesus will carry us through the rough spots. Jesus will seal up the potholes or bring a safe passage over. It is Jesus that will strengthen the places that still feel weak. It is Jesus that will unite us and give us the energy that we need. Church, no turning back. No turning back.